Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This week we have another great topic that I think is very important to talk about, and that is the mistake that you need to avoid when picking a partner. This is, I think, really tried and true. It's a wide concept that covers, I think, a lot of these like five things that are red flags that, you know, are little things, but there's one just overall umbrella topic that I think that we need to discuss that is really at the heart of it. Drum roll, the biggest thing that you need to avoid when picking a partner is unrealistic expectations. Now, this can be absolutely two-sided. I think from my experience and from what I have heard from feedback is that many women oftentimes will have this issue. They will have unrealistic expectations. We definitely see it in the dating world time and time again in the things that they say they want a man to do like very early on in the relationship, really before it's earned. So I want to spend some time talking about what it is, what it leads to in the breakdown of a relationship, which is what we all want to avoid. And then I'm going to talk about some of the signs. So there's four big signs that this is happening in the person that is sitting across from you. And then I want to talk about the two things that people do in relationships to avoid this big issue. So let's start from the beginning, right? It's, it's difficult to really tell early on in dating if somebody has unrealistic expectations for a future relationship. It's very easy to tell in the dating stage if they have unrealistic expectations, but there are cases in which they can have unrealistic expectations for dating, and I hear about this a lot of times from women, where they just want all of that upfront effort from a man, and then when she feels safe enough to invest, she will, you know, and she does have sort of this shift in mindset in what she's willing to give in the early dating stages compared to marriage. If it's right or wrong, I'll let you guys be the judge of that, but I really do think that that's sort of how our culture is set up right now. So what's the impact of this? The impact of this is that it's very difficult to tell if that person that's sitting across from you that you're starting to go on dates with, if they have this tendency. And I, I think the problem with it really is that you can have a great dating relationship, you can have a great time in the early stages of a relationship, but the bottom line is, are you having that great time and great connection that it feels like it is? Because you guys are both really satisfied with the current situation, with the reality of where you're at right now? Or is it because one or both of you are really excited about the potential of the future relationship? And that is where that potential of the future relationship, if that's where that excitement and happiness and connection is coming from, that's a dangerous thing. Because I want you guys to think back to <laughs> when you were a kid and all the things that you said you were going to do as an adult, how many of those things have actually come about? How many things even in the last five years that you set as goals potentially, or maybe you just had them as thoughts that you were going to be somewhere in a certain place in five years and you know you don't know what life brings you and that's not where you're at right now so in most cases i don't think we can really predict our future and i don't think that we need to i think that as long as we are really satisfied and happy with what we have in the moment then that's really all that matters eventually and this is oftentimes where relationships will break down from the early dating stages is those expectations start to not be met, right? Like things don't go as planned and then things can really turn quickly and you feel like that connection is all of a sudden lost and you don't even know what happened to it looking back. Or maybe it's a longer timeline where you feel like somebody has actually changed a lot and it can be because that person was acting in a way in which they assumed that circumstances would change and it was impacting their amount of happiness. And then when they were not getting there, you saw a different side to them. So I wanted to see how many divorces and broken down relationships 
actually are a result of unrealistic expectations. And there was a study, a survey, not that long ago, that actually showed that 45.3% of divorces was a result of unrealistic expectations being met. So these could be from um, how the household was being run, where they were living, and how they were being treated as a spouse. Those were like the top reasons for divorce in the U.S. One side note thing I want to talk about is seeing these signs within yourself, right? So we can definitely have these unrealistic expectations that we're carrying internally. And the big red flag to that is this assumption that things will get better in time or will get better when you're married. Huge warning sign. So that's where you really want to check yourself. Because these expectations can put a lot of strain on the other person and it can leave you feeling let down. And what that leads to is resentment. And that's like the huge big R no-no area. It's like the number one result of a broken down relationship. And what resentment does is it really breaks down the commitment. It'll diminish the desire to put effort into your relationship. It will not make you want to make the relationship work. It'll look like poor communication, lack of compromise, and just the absence of everyday kindness. The other thing that you'll see with the buildup of resentment and the lack of having those expectations met is quite often manipulation of that one partner that is holding the resentment. And that can be their default because they've either been burned in the past by a previous romantic partner or it's just how they've always functioned. Uh, Control might really be the only way that they feel like they can protect themselves from getting hurt again. The impact, the average first marriage that ends in divorce is usually lasting about eight years. So we know that eight year mark is sort of that really trouble area for a lot of couples. And I think it makes sense that, you know, a lot of lifelong goals, you know, you can really have a a huge indicator by eight years whether or not they're going to be met or not. And that's, you know, when things are starting to crumble. All right, guys, so let's get into the red flags. I have four big red flags that she has unrealistic expectations within the relationship. One, lack of gratitude, right? This is the expectation that she is holding for you to do more. So she's not going to show appreciation for the things that you are doing because in the back of her head, she's just thinking about what you didn't do. Two, a lack of clear communication. So this is the expectation of hers that you are a mind reader or that you should become a mind reader. And it's obviously not realistic to expect your partner to be able to read your mind. And it is just extremely toxic when I hear advice or women on TikTok or any kind of social media platform that is even just talking greatly, sometimes very positively about the man that she's with because he's a mind reader. I think that feeds into this really bad narrative and message that that's something that's highly desirable. Um, The fact is, is that I don't care if you desire it or not, that's unrealistic, it's not fair, and it kind of just takes away your responsibility to be able and capable of communicating your own feelings. Number three, she tries to control you and potentially change you. This comes from her expectations of you to be like her and for you to act like her, make decisions like her, behave like her because she, you know, thinks that she knows it all. She thinks that she knows best. This is obviously not healthy. And what it can look like in the relationship is her having really strong negative opinions on things that you value in your life and that you see as positives, such as certain friends, certain hobbies, your work, and how you spend your money. That's a huge one, guys. Honestly, if she has like a lot of negative opinions about how you're spending your money, 
I mean, absolutely, it should be a discussion. Obviously, before you're getting married, like that should be talked about. There should be mutual goals of the relationship. But if it's like you're free spending money, you know, that you are capable and able to afford reasonably, um, how you spend that should not really matter. How you spend that can honestly just be signs of what you do value, right? Like hopefully you're putting your finances into the things that you value. And so if she has, you know, a, a negative opinion about those things, again, it's, it's a sign that she doesn't agree with what you value. And absolutely, like, she should have different values than you. Like, we're not all going to perfectly match up together, but it's about having the respect that we're different and that you can value something more or less than what I value it as. Like, there should just be that level of respect and she should not be controlling that or making you change your values to match hers. Four, this is a huge one, guys. It's a bad reaction from her in regards to the feelings that you express and vulnerabilities that you're opening up about. So this is a sign of her expectation, unrealistic expectation for you to be strong all the time and to show no signs of weakness. This is obviously like toxic masculinity. It's very toxic for any relationship. Um, and th this is hopefully one that is slowly going away. But if you run into a woman that has these red flags where she's reacting very poorly to your, your emotions, that's not a good sign. You know, that's a sign that she definitely has these, these unrealistic expectations. So let's get to the solutions. There's two of them. Um, I'm actually going to do the second one that I was thinking about first because I think that this is across the board a very solid way to avoid a lot of these things, especially if you take in this information and you look for the red flags. And that is dating long enough in order to see the red flags and the green flags, right? So the green flags being the opposite, the complete opposite of the red flags. So you you guys, you, you got to date long enough. You know, you can't be one of these couples that wants to just get married in two months and you just feel like everything it is so 100% sure that you are making the right decision because like you can't be, you didn't, you didn't experience those things yet in which like her expectations have not been met and what are her reactions to that? And you got to be able to talk about these things and you need that literal time in order to have these conversations. So this goes in my number two, and that is communicating expectations prior to marriage. So having the premarital counseling and just being open and honest about expectations and what your relationship will actually look like as a married couple compared to a just dating couple what you're going to look like as a parenting relationship. You know, if you're bringing kids into the world, what that's going to look like. How are roles going to be split? And of course, you're not going to be able to know everything perfectly well, but I think that there are always things that we're thinking about. You know, like, so if I'm about to marry someone, I'm absolutely thinking about these things, but why aren't we always talking about them out loud? Like, it's okay, you don't have to hold each other to what we're talking about. Like, it's not like it's set in stone because, of course, life changes and evolves and you have to be able to evolve with it. But it's absolutely better to talk about these things out loud rather than just holding them in and thinking about it. And then, you know, it's it something comes up down the line and he doesn't even know that like you were thinking one way. Like at least you've talked about it and you kind of know where each other stands and what you're really looking for and what will really satisfy you in a relationship. So I hope that this was helpful today, guys. If you have any other topics that are specific that you want me to talk about in the next few episodes, please leave a comment and maybe I'll talk about it next week. All right, guys, see ya.